Welcome everyone. Today we're going to use SOHCAHTOA and sine law and cosine law to solve a variety of problems in 2D questions and 3D questions. So our first example, uh, our first couple examples are just going to be dealing with SOHCAHTOA exclusively and then we'll do a little review of when to use sine law and when to use cosine law. Jonathan stands 10 meters away from a tree. He looks up and determines the angle of elevation to the top of the tree to be 60. Determine the exact height of the tree. Okay, so um, we have a tree. And we have Jonathan over here. And we're going to imagine that Jonathan stares straight at this tree. If he looks at the tree and then he turns his head up to look at the top of the tree, that's the angle of elevation. So that's going to be 60 degrees. Okay, I'm going to call this T for tree. Um, one little assumption that we are going to make here is that the tree is perpendicular with the ground. Usually uh, this is a little bit different in nature with trees. Sometimes they're not always exactly equal to 90 degrees from the ground, um, but we would kind of assume that if they're standing up straight, they're at approximately an angle of 90 degrees. We also know that Jonathan is 10 meters away from the tree. Determine the exact height of the tree. Okay, well, if we think about this, I have 60 as a reference angle and I have opposite and adjacent. So I'm going to use tangent in order to solve this question. And it's going to equal t over 10. Now, if we also think about our special triangle, um, our 30, 60, 90 triangle, we can get an exact ratio for the tan of 60. And I'm actually just going to plug in that exact ratio into our calculator uh, or into our calculation here, I should say. So if 60 is the reference angle, this is opposite and this is adjacent. And that means that the tan of 60 is equal to root 3 over 1 or simply root 3. So I'm actually just going to plug that right in to our question here. And in order to isolate for t, we're just going to multiply up the 10 on each side. The 10s over here cancel, and we're left with 10 root 3 meters. Therefore, Jonathan, or therefore the tree must be exactly 10 root 3 meters. Two wires are attached on opposite sides of a tree to stabilize it. The first wire is attached at an angle of 30 degrees to the ground. The wire on the other side is attached at an angle of 45 degrees to the ground. If the tree is 150 centimeters, find the exact distance between the two wires. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this green line be our tree. And we have a wire on one side, which makes an angle of 45 um, to the ground. and an angle on the other side, which makes an angle of 30 to the ground. Uh, and that actually means, sorry, based on our information here, that actually means that, yeah, sorry, I had it right the first time. So this will be 30 degrees, okay? Uh, if you want, maybe this could be out a little bit more just to show that that angle is a smaller angle. All right, so there's our 30. Um, so one thing that we do know is that the tree is 150 centimeters off the ground. And one little assumption that we're going to make is that the tree makes a right angle with the ground. Now here's what we're trying to find. I'm going to call this Z. And the reason why I'm calling this Z is because this is the combination of two lengths, X and length y. So I really just need to find those two, um, those two measurements and add them together to get z. So z is going to be equal to x plus y once we find them. Okay, and I'm going to label these triangles. This is going to be triangle number one and triangle number two. Okay, so let's take a look at triangle number one by itself. Triangle number one is a 45 degree angle and that actually means 
if this is triangle number one and this is 45 and this is 90, that means that this is also 45. So if I know that this is 150 centimeters, I actually know that these two lengths are equal because these two angles are equal. So that one doesn't even require a calculation. That's 150 centimeters, and that's going to be our x distance. Now let's look at triangle 2. So same measurement of the tree over here. Um, and because I know this is 90 and 30, I know the remaining angle over here is 60. So in order to find y, I'm actually just going to, so we can set up something similar to what we did in the other question, or I can use the 30, 60, 90 triangle that we know the ratios of, and then just use scale factors in order to solve this. So if this is one root three and two, what is the scale factor that gets me from one to 150. Well, that's a multiple of 150. So the same applies for this side ratio. If I multiply root 3 by 150, I now have the new measurement over here, and that's 150 root 3 centimeters. So now that I have x and y, I can find z by simply adding them together. Okay, and be mindful about adding radicals. I actually can't add 150 and 150 root 3. Um, they need to have the same radical value in order to add them. What you can do, however, is we have a common 150. So if you wanted to express this in fully simplified form, you might consider factoring out 150, which means I'm dividing 150 from each term, leaving me with 1 plus root 3 in my brackets here. Okay, this is probably the ideal um, expression of this answer. However, if you answered with the line above, that would also be fine. Okay, quick recap of sine law and cosine law. So the first thing that we need to remember in order to uh, think about sine law and cosine law is that both of these are used in non-right angle triangles. However, if you happen to accidentally use them in a right angle triangle, it will still give you the correct answer. Uh, the important thing to note here is that if you have a non-right angle triangle, um, you cannot use Sokotoa. Um, that's the one major rule. So sine law and cosine law are actually okay for right angle triangles. They're not ideal because they take more time. Um, but Sokotoa absolutely is only for right angle triangles, and you should not be using Sokotoa for non-right triangles. Okay, another thing that we also need to know in order to understand how these formulas work is that if I label a triangle A, B, C, capital letters are used to uh, represent angles and the sides are labeled with the lowercase letter of the angle that they're across from. So the side across from angle A is little a or lowercase a. The side across from angle B is lowercase b, and the side across from lowercase or the side across from angle C is lowercase c. Okay, so this is how we label sides and angles in triangles. So if you see in these formulas a lowercase uh, variable, that's actually representing a side length, and if you see an uppercase, that is actually representing an angle. Okay, so the big rule for sine and cosine law is that sine law is used when you have one angle and its opposite side measurement. So for instance, in order to use this, you would need to know either angle A and side A angle B and side B, or angle C and side C. Uh, plus, you need to know one additional angle or one additional side. Mm. 
Okay, so what I'm always looking for to decide between cosine law and sine law is I will always look to see if I have one angle and its opposite side measurement. And if I don't, I automatically go to cosine, um, cosine law. Uh, if you do, then you stick with sine law. So look for this first, and this is always going to give you an indication as to which, uh, which law you should be using. Also, it's important to note that sine law is only used with two of these ratios at once. So I usually only have uh, one of the ratios equal to another ratio, and I solve for an unknown. And then if I need to find the other ones, I'll apply sine law again. Okay, cosine law, um, we really only need these. But I have put all of them here just so we can understand that when you rearrange these formulas, basically uh, here, if I'm doing cos of a particular angle, let's say A, I want to start with its opposite side squared, and then I subtract the other two sides squared, and the other two sides are on the bottom. Okay, and that's the case for all of these rearranged formulas. If I'm doing cos of B, I start with side B, and subtract the squares of the other two sides and have negative two times the other two sides on the bottom okay so that's kind of the relationship here and then same thing over here this formula allows me to find a missing side length if i know two sides and the angle opposite to a okay same thing here b and this will be cos b c and cos c plus the additional two sides that are not b and not c here Okay, so when do I use cosine law? Well, I use cosine law if you don't have an opposite angle and side pairing. Uh, if you don't know an angle and its opposite side measurement. So the scenarios where you will have to do that would be this. And I'm just going to write them next to each of these because each of these is a rearranged version of cosine law, which is good for solving for a specific scenario. So this is going to be the scenario where you know two side lengths and you want to find the third. Plus, you know a contained angle between those two side lengths. So we call a contained angle uh, also an included angle. And this is, for instance, when I know that this is 2, this is 3, and this is 40 degrees. This is a contained angle. I don't know this angle's opposite side measurement, so I can't use sine, but this allows me to use cosine law. Okay, and then the other scenario where I would use these sets of formulas here would be if I know all three side lengths. And I'm trying to find one of the angles in the triangle. Let's take a look at an example. Pam, Stephen, and Rachel are standing on a soccer field. Stephen and Rachel are 23 meters apart. So let's just start sketching here. Pam, Stephen, and Rachel. Essentially, their three locations form a triangle. And we know that Stephen and Rachel are 23 meters apart. This is side little p. It's across from angle p, so it's going to be side little p. And it's 23 meters. Now, from Stephen's point of view, if he looks over to Pam and then over to Rachel, he's seeing that these guys are separated by an angle of 60 degrees. That's the angle at Stephen. That's 60 degrees right there. Now, from Pam's point of view, if she looks over at Stephen and then rotates her view toward Rachel, she can see that these guys are separated by an angle of 45 degrees, and that's over at Pam, 45 degrees. Okay, 
I'm going to do a quick calculation here. If I know two angles in a triangle, I can easily find the third by subtracting these two from 180. So I'm just going to put this right into my calculator, 180 minus 60 minus 45, and that actually gives me the remaining angle of 75 degrees here. Okay, might as well plug that in now because we're going to be finding the other distances, uh, this little r and uh, this little s right here. So the distance from Pam to Rachel is a little s, and the distance from Stephen to Pam, that's little r. You should also notice in part b, it's actually asking us to find the exact distance from Pam to, Ra from Pam to Rachel, so no decimals. We're going to use exact values with our special triangles. Okay, so what am I looking for in order to decide between SOHCAHTOA, sine law, and cosine law? Well, first, I want to decide if this is a right angle or not to decide if I can use SOHCAHTOA. So this is not a right angle triangle, which means that I can't use SOHCAHTOA. Next, I want to decide if I know a side and its opposite angle measurement. And it looks like we do here. So in this case, I'm actually going to apply sine law. And sine law says that an angle, uh, a side over its opposite angle will be equal to any other side length over the sine of its opposite angle. So here I'm trying to find little s. So I'm going to use little s and the sine of s. Okay. If I were looking for an angle measurement, I can also flip this ratio, like so, as long as I flip both sides. So you can actually use the formula either with the sides on top and the angles on the bottom, or if you flip it, you can use the angles on top and sides on the bottom. Now I usually use this if I'm looking for an unknown angle. Um, or if it makes you happy, you can just leave it the same always, but this just makes it a little bit easier to isolate. Okay, because I'm looking for an unknown side, I'll keep the sides on the top and enter in what I know. Okay, so that's what I know. Um, I also know that I've got two special angles here, 45 and 60. And I'm going to use the 45 and 60 triangles to actually enter in the exact value of both of these ratios here. Um, but first, I am going to do a little cross multiplication just to get rid of any fractions. So it's going to be 23 sine 60 equals S sine 45. Then I'm going to enter in the exact value of sine 60, which is root 3 over 2, and the exact value of sine 45, which is 1 over root 2. Okay, so in isolating for s here, really all that I need to do is multiply up root 2 on each side, and these will cancel, and then I'm simply left with 1s, or just s. Now when we multiply here, we're actually getting root 6. So you're going to get 23 root 6 over 2. And this is in meters. Okay, I'm going to do part C down here. So part C, I'm going to start with the angle inside that we're already given to me. That is not S, that is little p over the sine of p and I'm looking for little r in part c so that will be over the sine of its opposite angle capital R. So same first part here as last time and I know angle r is 75 degrees. Now you'll notice that this question does not ask you to determine the exact distance because 75 is not an exact uh, special angle. So I won't be able to find an exact ratio here anyways. So really all that I'm gonna do to isolate for R is simply multiply up sine of 75. And I'm gonna do that over here as well. And these will cancel and R will be by itself. 
You can also cross multiply, but you're just kind of adding in a step when you don't need to add in a step. So you are going to calculate this expression in your calculator, making sure you're in degree mode. And we should get approximately 31.4 meters when we round to one decimal. Okay, let's take a look at a problem in 3D. Um, my apologies for the kind of bad drawing here. Um, but you kind of have to imagine this as if it's in uh, 3D. So we have an antenna. This is kind of standing up from the ground. And this triangle right here is on the ground. So this is measuring from Sam's house to the bottom of the antenna to Elena's house to the bottom of the antenna again. Now these lines up here, these are angles that if we're at Elena's house, we're looking up to the top of the antenna, so kind of like triangles in the air. And then the other one over here is from Sam's house looking up to the antenna. And one extra little assumption that I'm going to make here is that the antenna is at a 90 degree angle with the ground. Um, that would be ideal uh, for things like antennas and street lamps and walls. All of these things, if they're standing up properly, are hopefully standing at an exact angle of 90 degrees to the ground in order to make that happen. Okay, so there's a couple triangles in here that have some shared sides. And this is really the key to a lot of our um, questions where we have 3D. Uh, to kind of identify those shared sides and work our way backwards to see what we can use in specific triangles that will help us um, get to where we need to go. So if I'm looking for the exact height of the antenna, I'm going to call that X. Now, I do know an angle in here. This is 12 degrees, an angle of elevation of 12 degrees. And that's the angle inside here. But I don't really know anything else in this triangle. But I am noticing that these two triangles have a shared side here, and that's this side. So potentially, if I can find this side in the bottom triangle, the blue triangle, then I can use that to help me find x. So these are kind of my goals here. Uh, also notice that there's a right angle triangle in the corner here. So I'm going to call this triangle number one and triangle number two. Okay, so if I kind of, remember this is also in 3D, so this is a little bit warped. So you can't look at the angle and decide, oh, that's 90 degrees or oh, that's not 90 degrees because we're looking at things now in 3D. So not everything is flat. Um, so here's triangle number one. I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit. It has a right angle. It has an angle of 50 degrees here. This is Sam's house, this is Elena's house, and this is the bottom of the antenna. So this makes this side y. And the side that tells us the distance between Sam's house and Elena's house is 1,200 meters. OK, so this makes things a little bit easier, I think, for us. Um, if this is opposite and hypotenuse, and it's a right angle triangle, I can use SOHCAHTOA. So I'm going to use sine of 50 is equal to opposite, which is y, over hypotenuse, which is 1,200 meters. We're going to multiply up that 1,200 meters to get y by itself. OK, now this isn't our final answer, so I'm going to suggest maybe we use uh, a good amount of decimals here, at least four decimals. Um, if you can keep it in your calculator, even better. Okay, or you can just use all of them. It's really not that long. And this is meters. So now we have this length. This is 9, 19.25, and so on. Now let's look at triangle number two. Okay, I always find it helpful to just draw separate pictures of each of the triangles and kind of flatten them out so that you can really see what you're looking at here. So we have a right angle. We have an angle of elevation from Elena's house being 12 degrees. I'm looking for the height of the antenna. And I know this length now, this length of y, 
which is 919.2533317. Okay, so again, this is a right angle triangle, so we have opposite and we have adjacent, and I can use Sokotoa, so I'm going to use tan in order to solve for this. So tan of 12 degrees is equal to opposite, which is x, over adjacent, which is our 919 measurement. Okay, multiply up your 919. And enter into your calculator. Now, if you saved that decimal value in your calculator from earlier, you can simply multiply your answer by the tan of 12. Okay, and I'm looking to see nearest meter. So we're actually rounding this to one whole decimal place. So if this is 195.3933 and so on, we're going to round this approximately to the nearest meter, which is 195 meters. Okay, and we can finish it off and just say with a little therefore sentence, therefore the antenna is 195 meters tall. Okay, we're actually not going to do this question, so don't worry about this. If you want to try it as like a challenge question, you can try that out. I think the solution is posted for you guys on Edsby, um, but we're going to leave it there.